Hello, my friends. Welcome to The Chew. I'm Robert Wallace. This is the place where we ask, am I choosing the way of Jesus or am I choosing my own way? Yesterday, we covered the law and the efforts of the scribes and Pharisees to hold everyone accountable to every letter of the law. We talked about the law being a hard taskmaster. And one verse I didn't share with you yesterday came from the brother of Jesus, James, found in chapter 2, verse 10 of his book. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking it all. I think we can all agree the law is a terrible, a terribly hard taskmaster. And knowing this should not cause us to look beyond the, or to not consider the spirit of the law. And this is our focus today. We have laws for the good order of society. And we have Paul telling us that the law tells us what sin is. That's in Romans chapter 3, verse 20. Now, as Christ's followers, Jesus gave us two commands. He answered, love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your strength and with all of your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. Luke chapter 10, verse 27. And then in Matthew chapter 22, verse 40, Jesus said this, All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. This is important to remember. God wants us to love him the way he loves us, with everything. God loves us with everything. Jesus is the proof of that. The commandment, in the t one of the Ten Commandments is found in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. You shall have no other gods before me. It's a very simple and direct command, isn't it? God alone deserves our adoration, our worship, and our life, our everything. That's what Jesus was saying in Luke chapter 10, verse 27. God's grace, his love, his mercy are all revealed to us in Jesus Christ. God's grace to us is also found in the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is given to us as our advocate, our counselor, and our guide. You can read what Jesus says about the promised Holy Spirit in John 14, verses 15 through 31. Here's the work of the Holy Spirit. When we sin, the Holy Spirit says, hey, what are you doing? When we start to allow something in our life to become more important than God itself, meaning it's becoming a God in our lives, the Holy Spirit says, what are you doing? The Holy Spirit gives us an opportunity to recognize that we're out of the will of God and to repent of that. In other words, to turn back to God, to get back into that right relationship with him. So, the law of the Holy Spirit, or the spirit of the law, reveals to us not just the law itself. It helps us see God's intent is for us to move freely in a relationship with him. The law has absolute boundaries. And Jesus takes the scribes and the Pharisees to task for it because they had become so dedicated to the law that they we're overlooking the law giver. Their hearts were absolutely sold out to a, the observation of the law. When we love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves, as Jesus commanded us, we will find ourselves living in the freedom and have the life that God has for us. Here are my questions today. Do I live my life as someone under the law? Do I live my life as someone who understands the spirit of the law? Am I living under the woe as a hypocrite that, hypocrite that Jesus pronounced on the scribes and Pharisees? What's the Holy Spirit asking me to take action on today? Am I going to choose the way of Jesus that leads to a full life, or am I going to choose my own way? 
I'm praying for us as we review all these verses and passages that I've shared today. Let's invite the Holy Spirit to give us eyes to see and ears to hear God's truth from His Word. Let's have receptive hearts and minds to receive these truths deeply within. And then, let's take a step of faith today with the same boldness, commitment, and courage of Jesus to do what the Holy Spirit leads us to do. I pray you'll have a wonderful day, my friends. Go in the peace of God. Blessings to you. Bye for now.